was bad Peyton that showed up on Monday Night Football. Manning with four interceptions, three in the fourth quarter alone. Broncos blow a fourth quarter lead, and now the best they can do is the two seed come playoff time. All right, fellas, what's your level of concern for the Broncos? I've got some concerns. I don't want to go too far with it, Skip, because this is Peyton Manning we're talking about, the great Peyton Manning. Uh, but how old is he, 39? I mean, he, he is 39 years of age. Uh, I certainly don't want to imply that Father Tom literally is catching up. Uh, he's Peyton Manning. He's one of the greatest quarterbacks in NFL history. Uh, Skip has repeatedly said he's arguably the greatest regular season quarterback in history. Uh, but over the last several weeks, you know, we were inclined to say that the Denver Broncos are moving in a different direction. They had some injuries to Wes Welker, to Julius Thomas. That ankle's still bothering yep. him, by the way, it which does. we saw transpire last night. Obviously, Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders can do their thing, and this dude, C.J. Anderson, is no joke. He's shown the ability to run the football effectively. But averaging around 35 to 37 rushing attempts per game, uh, over a four-game stretch didn't seem to be what we would expect from the Denver Broncos. The fact that it was happening uh, raised a few eyebrows. Uh, but then you look at last night, four interceptions in any game is excessive for any quarterback. For Peyton Manning, it's almost impossible to imagine. But then when you combine that with the fact that in the uh, fourth quarter, he threw three of them. Then that really, really blows you away. And then when you take into account the fact that in the third quarter, he came out guns blazing. Uh, look at, I think, throwing for almost 200 yards and his accuracy was on point. You know, it would be one thing if you just had an awful, awful night. Now, the weather was inclement. You know, the rain came, it was pouring wow. down. We understand that that is a factor. But at the same time, it just seemed to be very unpatent Manning like when Kirkpatrick. Uh, intercepted him. Kilpatrick got intercepted him. Uh, he was throwing off his back foot. He hadn't set, really planted, and threw the and throw the foot through the football the way we're accustomed to seeing him do. He underthrew uh, one pass where um, uh, Adam Pacman Jones faked the blitz and then come, went in coverage yep. and, and and got in front of uh, one of the Thomases. Yep. It's just that Peyton Manning is the kind of guy that usually sees this stuff. It's not to say that he's flawless because he's not, but. It wasn't the fact that he threw interceptions. It was how he threw the football, you know, some of the mechanical and fundamental errors that could easily be deciphered from watching him throw the football. That's enough to raise concerns because that's not going to be good enough to beat New England. That's not going to be good enough to beat a Seattle, uh, assuming they make the Super yeah. Bowl and Seattle is their opponent. That's not going to be enough. So I would say the level of concern, Skip, on a scale of 1 to 10 should be about a 7, Doug, Skip. I, I, did, I, think, I think a 7 is a safe place to go right now. Not overly concerned, yeah. but you don't want to just dismiss it either. There's cause for some alarms. I'm going to go higher on the 1 to 10 scale, but I'm going to cut to the chase. My takeaway from last night is that... The Denver Broncos will lose the AFC championship game and lose it decisively in Foxborough, Massachusetts to the New England Patriots. That's what last night proved to me. Something is amiss with the Broncos' psyche here. They're going through an identity crisis. Are we a run-based team or do we just throw it all over the lot the way we have when we've both been most lethal? And to me, th that question that everybody's asking, is Peyton hurt? You just brought up the third quarter. Boy, he looked good in the third quarter. But Stephen A., there, there's one crazy thing about Peyton Manning to me that, that has always perplexed me. Despite all of his quarterback genius, and I think we all agree he has the highest quarterback IQ ever. Is that fair to say? I, I don't know one higher. I don't okay? So that's the genius level of quarterback. For all that genius, Peyton Manning still has the capacity to flat out flunk the occasional odd game because he now has six four plus interception games in his career. Yes. Six. Mm -hmm. Where does that come from? Joe Montana had one in his entire career in 1984 against the same Cincinnati Bengals. Now, Tom Brady has had six, so he has it also. Brett Favre had eight 
uh, four plus interception games. But still, you think of the great Peyton Manning, you think he would be incapable of throwing more than a couple of picks in a game. So you pointed out, Stephen A., in the third quarter last night, they just said, heck with all this run game. Let's go back to what we did last year that mostly blew the conference off the map last year as they marched toward the Super Bowl. Right. And they just go bombs away. And Peyton goes 12 for 16 for you, you threw out the number, but it was 168. This is just in the third quarter. That's right. Two touchdowns and no interceptions. His QBR, again, scaled 0 to 100, was 99.3 just in the third quarter alone. Guess what his QBR was in the fourth quarter? Zero. <laughs> Peyton Manning went from 99.3 to zero. zero QBR in the fourth. Right. That's impossible. Right. The genius, the greatest regular season quarterback ever on the Monday night football stage, it was raining. Cats and bingles and dogs, right? Raining bingles and dogs last night. So I, I'm giving him a slight pass. But I can't say that he was hurt because he sure didn't look hurt in the third quarter. I know he doesn't throw with high velocity, throws a lot of puff passes, lollipops. And when he's hot, they just drop right down the chimney into Damaris's hands or Emmanuel's hands, whoever it is. So in the fourth quarter, when, when it came down to that point, Stephen A., 404 left. It, it comes to third and one at the 29. I'm thinking that Peyton owns this game because we all know the Bengals, prime time, any anytime the lights are brightest on an, in a night game, at home especially. We saw what the Cleveland Browns and Brian Hoyer did to him. I'm thinking, this game is over and Peyton owns it. And he made, to me, in all the years I've watched Peyton Manning, okay. the single worst decision and worst throw I've ever seen him wow. make in that circumstance in a regular season game. I can't explain Are you talking it. about when Adam Pacman picked him off? No, the other one. Oh, the, the other one. The, the Marys. He just threw a little lollipop yeah. into the flat. Yeah. I don't know where it was going. It was very Mark I, Sanchez like. I, I know, and it was it. It was. It was the pick six. But, but it was like, I don't think Demarius ran the wrong route. Mm -hmm. I just think, yeah, as you said, he was teetering backwards a little bit and threw off his back foot. He threw off his back yeah. foot. Okay, but, but he just lobs it up into the flat to nobody in particular except the Bengal who caught it and ran it back for six points. Mm -hmm. Well, when does Peyton Manning ever do that? And again... If, if somebody had run the wrong route, but it didn't appear wrong route, it just looked like either the ball slipped right. or he, for once in his life, panicked a little bit and just said, my God, we need a yard. And remember, they went out of shotgun. They went with their all their receivers. Okay. So they were not going to run the football on third and one. They said, he is going to throw the football. And it's like he got in a little bit of trouble. What he wanted might not have been there to start with. And all of a sudden, he made a desperation lob into the flat and the game was virtually over. Well, first of all, it, 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 and there was no excuse for it, but at the same time, we can't just point the finger at him. You've got a guy, for example, you got their running game. you got an offensive guard and this guy, Ben Garland, who came in as a block and fullback. They might have been able to give the ball to C.J. Anderson a little bit more. They didn't Good do app. that. Then you look at defensively. We were raving a lot. Of, we yeah. said there's another Brandon Marshall in the NFL. Hey, but, but I'm saying, yeah. he's gone. So and, this guy Davis, and this guy, Davis, that filled yeah. in was missing a bunch of tackles. I, I agree. So on their defense, that was a problem as well. But Akeem Tlaib and Von Miller had good games. Yep. They played effectively. But when you got this guy, Steven Johnson, and you got another guy and this guy, Todd Davis, who yep. show up on the defensive side of the ball and they don't produce and they're missing tackles, that certainly didn't help Denver's cause at all. So to me, when I look at it, it's not just about Peyton, but you have to look at Peyton because he was most conspicuous with Again, you didn't you didn't look at guys and say they were running the wrong routes. Mm -hmm. You didn't look at guys and say, well, they weren't doing what they were supposed to do. It was like, wow, this is on Peyton. Peyton looked a lot like Eli <laughs> last night. Dare you say? Dare I say? Yeah. Wow. And I, and I was like, whoa. Well, yeah, I mean, okay. That's true. But it is an that's aberration. Good. It is an aberration. Yeah. And it, it, but it's cause for concern because, I mean, first of all, I, I own the great Mike Tirico did a fabulous interview with Peyton Manning, you know, one-on-one -on -one leading into yeah. the game last he night. Did. And you saw how Peyton Manning was very, very serious about the level of importance to the game. Uh, because obviously getting yep. uh, a better record, getting a higher seed, uh, fulfilling uh, the quest of having a bye week in the playoffs where you'd only have to play one game before a trip to the AFC Championship game, all of these things were relevant to Peyton Manning. Knowing this coming into the game, you still played the way that he played in that fourth quarter. That's not something that, 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 that ever happens, really. It and so it's, it's a shock. It okay. was a shocker. Okay. They, they can't get the one seed, but they can get a bye okay. this weekend with a win over the Raiders. And, and obviously they're 14 and a half 
point favorites, even though the Raiders have had their flashes here of late. But I'm pretty sure Denver will go home and take care of business in that game, and they will be the two seed. But they're now bound for Foxborough, and it will be reversal of fortune from last year because obviously the Patriots had to play in Denver last year. I cannot see them winning in Foxborough, but I will acknowledge that in inclement weather conditions, that works against both teams, not just one of them. Uh, in Denver, if it was San Diego playing in those conditions, considered the weather they're accustomed to, that would be different. Yeah. Uh, but, but Denver, being in Denver, particularly this time of the year,